I've had quite a few customers coming in or shooting emails or texts, whatever, social media. They're showing me pictures of tomatoes because they're proud of them. They're, they're growing. They're growing so fast. And some of the tomatoes, what else? Uh, potatoes are starting to get some curling, some leafing. Like every leaf on the plant is curling. That's not a bug. That's pretty serious. It's called vertinillum wilt. And it's very common on things like tomatoes, the nightshade family shows up there mainly. And this is the whole reason why you, you, you rotate crops. You don't plant tomatoes every year in the same spot, or you're going to get eventually vertinilla wilt. It's a wilting of the foliage and there's no real cure. Now we can nurse it along and get the most out of it that we can. There's a product on the shelf. It's called revitalize. It's organic. So it's perfect for vegetable herb gardens. It's, it's a disease control. It'll help monitor, it won't cure it, but it'll help keep it in check. And so revitalize is a liquid, you spray the foliage, I do it every couple of weeks to keep this thing under control. But next year, do not plant tomatoes in that same spot. You plant it over there in that bed, get a, get a different, get let that soil rest because that virus, it actually winters over in the soil and comes back on the new plants as you plant them. And so you, and you, it's all nightshade. So don't put potatoes and tomatoes are really close relatives. In fact, sometimes people will graft tomatoes onto potatoes. It gets kind of weird. Like they're creating mad scientists uh, stuff, but uh, that's an aside. That's just for fun. Uh, but they're, they're the same, the same virus can get on both. Plant your radishes, plant your peppers, plant your eggplants there because it doesn't migrate over to that, that plant. You'll see the same thing, uh, uh, petunias. There's a wilt that gets on a certain variety of that that gets on petunias and calipricoa or million bells. So it's a, it's a, a traditional petunia. But if you keep putting petunias every year in the same soil, same spot, all the time, eventually you're going to get a wilt and it just kind of shrivels up and dies. And every time you plant a petunia in that spot again, it will automatically infect the new petunia. So that's why crop rotation. That's why you're rotating different kinds of flowers or different kinds of vegetables every year. You're not planting the same thing every time and every in the same spot. Or eventually you're going to have these issues. And so that's one that I'm seeing quite a bit of. There's no permanent cure for vertinella wilt on tomatoes. When I see it on my plants, I mean, right now, especially in June, I rip that sucker up because it affects a crop. It won't produce very well. The flavor goes off. It's not a good plant. And that virus is sitting right there. So I'll, I'll rip that thing out to the ground. I get it. I don't even compost it. Throw it away. It's so dangerous. And it comes back so easily. You kind of want to get that thing off your property. And so that's what I do. And then I'll plant something else in that spot while I still have room. So tomatillos. I'm not sure if I, you know, I don't know if tomatillos get fruit and wilt. Never seen it. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But, but uh, peppers don't. Eggplants don't. Squash doesn't. So plant one of those in that spot. And if you need another tomato, plant it over there away from, you don't want to get it next to another tomato because it'll go right down the line and affect them all. So it's just something to watch. I'm seeing this over and over, quite a few instances. So it's not enough to be a, a pandemic or epidemic or, or just taking over the neighborhood like grasshoppers are right now, or like aphids, oh my gosh, like they are right now. But it's something to watch, something to look at. Another thing I'm doing right now uh, with my tomatoes specifically, because I know they get these wilt kind of issues. I know it comes from the soil up to the foliage, starts eating the foliage and then spreads. I know that's what happens. And it's a very common type of disease that gets in the garden, vegetable garden specifically. So I'm pruning up. I'm not letting my tomatoes sucker or run on the ground. I don't want any foliage to touch the ground. I just prune it off. I don't want I don't want one spotted yellow curled leaf on my tomatoes. I pinch them off. The second I see one little oh you don't quite look right, I pinch that sucker off. I'm not letting this thing spread. And so I just I'm real really watch it right now because this is when it when it really at the winter the summer solstice. This is when it really seems to take off summer seems to make it all grow faster. And so kind of do the same thing in your gardens. This is when you want to 
a, a tomato cage or stakes or something to keep the foliage up. That's the reason that we're doing that. It prevents, it, it reduces disease issues. So it's a game changer. Really, and, and you'll be able to get more tomatoes per square foot in the garden, especially for a smaller kind of backyard gardener. If you got these huge gardens out in Chino Valley and Paulden, you know, Cottonwood, those areas, oh yeah, go for it. Just plant it down the other end of the row. I've got a small yard. So I've got raised bed gardens. They're big raised beds, but it's limited space. So I'm trying to get the most out of those, those gardens or containers. And that's kind of how I garden. And it's quite successful. I'll have more produce than I know what to do with. And you can you can grow your own. It's not too late to plant. Now, you need to do it pretty quickly. It's time. You need to, if you're going to put another summer type of vegetable in, now is the time. Don't wait. If you're going to put a, an apple, cherry, tree, a, 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 a persimmon, a, a fig, pomegranate, now is the best time to plant. Okay, that's it for, for this segment. Be right back after this.